you know what time it is. <laughs> Overwatch 2 Retail Passion, it's April 16th, 2024. Hey, that's my birthday, tomorrow. Tomorrow's gonna be a busy ass day. Holy shit, I didn't even realize. Uh, I'm gonna mute alerts for a little bit uh, so we can get through this. Um, Cause we got a lot of juice. We got a lot of juice to get through. Overwatch 2 Retail Passion, it's April 16th, 2024. Limited time mode, Clash Trial. Clash's upcoming game mode in Overwatch 2. Teams must battle back and forth over five capture points and each captured objective adding a point to the prevailing team's score. Teams can, win can in two, teams can win in two ways, either by having control of all five objectives at once, or by scoring five points total before the other team. Clash will be available as a limited time trial through April 29th. How Clash is played. Five total objectives placed in a linear pattern in a mirrored map. Only one objective is active at a time. Matches will start at the center objective active. Uh, players capture an objective by standing on it, filling the progress bar. Capture progress can be not be made it when, if the enemy team are contesting the objective. When a team captures the current objective, they are awarded one point to their total score, and a new objective moving forward from the scoring team side is activated. Objectives can be secured multiple times. If a team is pushed off of an objective and the other team successfully captured it, the next active point will be in the opposite direction. Okay, makes sense. Um, I don't, I'm not going to go too much more into that part. Uh, let's see. Actually, wait, this is actually important. A team has successfully captured five objectives throughout the match to reach a total score of five to win, or regardless of score, a team manages to take the final objective A or E on the opponent's side. Okay. Uh, Hanaoka, new map. Explore never before seen, never before seen corners of Hanamura on in the new map Hanaoka. Inspired by the visual themes of the beloved Assault map, explore the shops and restaurants around town and follow the scent of Sakura trees into the once proud Shimada Castle. I'm glad they're bringing back Hanamura. Hanamura was always a beautiful map, even though 2CP sucked. Mythic Hero Skin updates. Mythic Hero Skins are unlocked in the new Mythic Shop in exchange for Mythic Prisms. Mythic Hero Skins are unlocked for 50 Mythic Prisms with a starting set of customizations and then can be leveled up with 10 Mythic Prisms per level. You can also unlock the skin and all available customizations for a Mythic Hero Skin for 80 Prisms. Uh, Mythic Prisms can be earned in the Premium Battle Pass and used in the Mythic Shop to purchase the current featured Mythic Hero Skin for the season and select previous Mythic Hero Skins. You can Oh, sorry, you can earn a total of 80 Mythic Prisms when you complete Premium Battle Pass. Okay. Earning Mythic, Pr Mythic Prisms in the Premium Battle Pass is the easiest way to unlock a Mythic Hero skin and all customizations each season. You can also purchase additional Mythic Prisms in-game or on your platform store marketplace. Uh, challenges, completing weekly challenges milestone will now reward additional Battle Pass XP. Overwatch coins that were earned in the weekly challenges can now be earned in the Battle Pass for all players. So the free Battle pa Pass is going to have coins in it now instead of uh, having to do those weekly challenges, which is nice because the weekly challenges, one, I feel like everybody kind of forgot about them. Um, and two, if you're like me and you're a grinder, you can just blow through the whole free, the whole Battle Pass in like four days. And then you don't have to worry about like, did you get all your coins for the season? So nice change. Endorsement changes. Players who are actioned for disruptive behavior and reduced to endorsement level zero cannot use text or voice chat features until they return to endorsement level one. Wait, I thought this was like a future change, like a season 12 or beyond. Oh, this is going in next season? Okay. Ah, uh, finally. Oh, uh, we're so back, dude. We're actually so saved. Hide my name, aka a real streamer mode. Updated option in streamer protect found in your social options. You are now able to hide your battle tag from other players in your group and from your friends in the match as well. When enabled, anywhere your battle tag is displayed to players during a match now displays a random anonymized battle tag instead of only to the player with hide my name settings visually enabled. Finally, a streamer mode. Oh my god. Hopefully the days of being hunted around by the incessant clip farmers and people being weird on special on drop days is over. 
my god bless progression added progression sub badges slash sub badges for rewards for venture Re rewards can be found with hero challenges okay lever penalties yeah i'm still not a big fan of these uh leaving two out of 20 games result in a five five minute suspension for queuing most modes 10 or more out of the 20 games result in a 48 hour percent suspension from queuing most modes all other threshold tiers are unchanged yeah i'm not a big fan of this one i think that's ridiculous but whatever overwatch 2 is a competitive game even for unranked game modes and the match experience i just want i just want to point out this though unranked is not what it's called it's called quick play if it was called unranked that's different that's not what it is it's quick play they're not even the same rules so to say overwatch is a competitive game and then also say for the unranked mode is kind of a little bit disingenuous in my opinion unranked is the card quick play is under i understand that but so is mystery heroes and nobody would argue that mystery heroes is a competitive game mode unless it's in the competitive game right like no one no one would think that i just it's like we we had unranked in that beta and we realized oh like it's a little bit too long so we keep quick so qu the whole idea of quick play should be able to be drop in and drop out like you it's the game like if even if it's under a tab it's still what the game mode is called right like i feel like we're just i feel like that's bullshit i don't I disagree i don't care i feel like it's bullshit uh game modes and the match experience for all remaining players is negatively affected when a player leaves before it is completed. Remember, a penalty only applies when you leave games and not when you complete games. By introducing a later five minute penalty, we aim to discourage players from deliberately leaving games they don't want to play. I, I think that this is just a really bad idea. While not impacting those who have a technical issue or a urgent need to step away from the game, which they will solve by the time the queue suspension is finished. Ah, did, I, this is not it. This is really not it. This is a really bad, this is a really bad line of thinking in my opinion. It, this is really bad. Uh, the larger 48 hour suspension aims to target a very small uh, portion of players who are aggressively leaving games. That one's fine. I'm, I'm actually cool with that one. If you're leaving, if you're leaving 10 out of 20 games, like what are you doing? Um, leaving 10 games in competitive play will now result in a season ban regardless of the number of games completed. This, I think, is going to probably cause some problems for people that pay, play, like, ridiculous amounts of games every season. Like, if you're, like, a 500 to 700 game a season player and you're, like, in college and you have bad internet, I have a feeling we're going to see some people get banned for that. Uh, and that's going to cause some controversy this season. Although, honestly, it's ranked, so, like, I'm not that mad about it. Players can still get banned from competitive play as few as five games if they leave very consistently and don't complete enough games to get back into go good standing. That, that makes sense. Games completed in competitive play now count towards the 20 game window of unranked lever penalty. Cool. Competitive updates, competitive role specific titles, end of season titles for competitive role queue now include the role, uh, the role the rank was achieved in. Examples include champion tank, champion support, champion damage, and open queue champion. Oh, 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 the, the titles, the titles. But the, the big thing is now it says individually. So it doesn't say like champion challenger or top 500 role challenger, right? Also, I feel like you should also get the champion and top 500 if you got both. I mean, like all 10 of them that got it this season, but yeah. Competitive progress. Uh, each role rank card now display the associated rank, sorry, competitive role specific title. That's cool. Um, role rank cards can now be selected to open the match, his to open the match history for selected role. That's nice. Match history will display the following map slash game mode, heroes, role, date, score, results of the map. This is all good. Uh, match history can now be selected to open the game report for a match. All very good. All very good. This is a big one. <clears throat> grouping restrictions. All previous competitive grouping restrictions have now been removed. All com groups in competitive play are now classified as narrow or wide. Players between bronze and diamond must be within five divisions of each other in their group to be a narrow group. So basically, if you are playing with your friends, everybody needs to be within five. So the highest someone can be is like plat one, and the lowest someone can be is gold one. Because like, you know, the top of plat, top of gold, right? <clears throat> and then obviously the same thing happens upwards to to, to to diamond but you can't have that gold person with the diamond person like what does that mean okay you know what let's let's break out the paint here here you have the ladder okay here's the ladder champ 
GM, silver, bronze, okay? In between this, everything on this ladder, okay, you can get one to five. When you get to one, you rank up. If you go below five, you rank down. There is five divisions though, that you can be in. So from, let's say if you're plat one, you can play with people in a group. Everyone in the group has to be between plat one and G1, or they have to be plat one to D1. Make sense? So basically, they have to be within this, everybody in the stack has to be within this range to be a narrow group. Other than that, you are a wide group, okay? So you're most likely gonna be in a wide group. Players at Masters may be, must be within three divisions of each player in their group to be a narrow group. So instead of for here, where it's five across, it's only three. So let's say if you have someone who's Masters one, they have, you have to have between Masters 1 and Masters 4, I should believe, right? Um, you're probably, like, the chances you having everyone in your Masters group be this close in rank is going to be tough. Anyways. Players at Grandmaster and Champion cannot be in narrow groups, regardless of how close their ranks are. These restrictions ensure that our highest ranked players have the highest quality narrow matches. This means, uh, if you're GM+, plus, uh, Solo queue is probably going to be your meta. Narrow groups will always be matched against other narrow groups or solo players. If a group has both wide and narrow configurations of players, the narrow configuration will always be prioritized. Any group that does not meet the criteria is considered a wide group. Wide groups of four players may not queue. This restriction exists so that solo players are never required to be, make a wide match, which is great. Good, good job on that one. Uh, wide groups have increased queue times and increased match quality because it's more difficult to find another group of players with the same ranks in the same roles to match against. That makes sense. That makes sense. The amount of players' rank progress changes after each match is modified with by the group's width. The wider the group is, the less their rank will change when winning or losing. So basically, if you have a four stack of bronzes with a GM player. When you win a game, your bro your ranks are barely f moving. Like you probably, I, if I was gonna make an educated guess, I bet you get like 4% or 3% rank. So the cool thing about that is if you're a really, really high rank player and your friends suck, you can go queue with them. And when you, whether you win or lose, if you queue with your friends and they're f terrible, that's okay, because even if you lose four games straight, it's like less than a normal ranked game that you lost. You know, that's pretty good. That's not too bad. The higher the rank of the highest ranked player in a wide group, the less the ranks of all players in the group will change when winning or losing. Players will now be informed of this configuration of roles that they have selected would result in a wide group. Uh, that's cool if we know like before you even hit the button. The tier legend has been updated and a new banner has been added to explain the rules described above. Cool, nice, good information. Rank information, new modifier wide has been added to the rank progress. Oh, so at the end screen. The modifier volatile has been re renamed to demotion. <laughs> Thanks, oh, dude, I got so sick of goddamn seeing this damn volatile bullshit. I was so sick of it. Uh, arrows displayed under the modifiers have been changed to the point from left to right and right to left. Wait. Arrow mo arrows displayed under the modifiers have been changed to point from left to right instead of right to left. New modifier, dem demotion protection. This modifier appears on the rank progress bar to denote when you did not go down in skill division because of a loss. If you lose the next match after you are drank, you are dropped down to the previous skill division. Okay, so small thing about this. I don't know if it's changed in this patch, uh, but the demotion protection is kind of smoke and mirrors bullshit. Um, because if you lose the next game, you still lose two games worth of rank. Like, there is no protection. Like, the only thing is, is like, you just don't lose the rank you see on your screen. That's it. But like, you did lose the points, they're gone. And like, you are in the next rank already. They just haven't changed the front facing screen. 
Um, we're working on trying to make it more clear with these changes. Oh, that's good. I'm, I'm glad. Um, but when you do lose your demotion game and you go down, how many points? It's like 40 or something like that. That f sucks. That, that hurts. That, that, that blows. Uh, victory and defeat have been added below the rank progress bar where modifiers are displayed. Golden weapons. Golden weapons can now be purchased with either legacy competitive points or 2024 competitive points. You cannot purchase weapons with a combination of both currencies. Okay. Uh, here updates. New hero, Venture. Venture has been added to the lineup. Venture is immediately available in competitive play. Holy f this is a pretty major change from past heroes, but we always wanted to allow new heroes into competitive when a new season of Overwatch 2 launches. In the past, we wanted to make sure a new hero were free of any bugs or outstanding balance issues, as well as giving players enough time to unlock a hero from the battle pass. Because of the recent hero trial, we are confident Venture is ready to jump into the action right away. Damn! That's actually pretty cool. I can't wait for somebody to complain. There's gonna there's gonna be someone that kicks up a shit storm. like, oh my god, Venture's so broken. Oh, I can't believe they put her put them right into into, into competitive right away. I Love can't you, man. You one of my favorite I, I, people someone, on YouTube. Someone's gonna do it. Haircuts, someone's nice. gonna do it. Heart. I can't freaking wait. Now, let's get to the real juice, shall we? Tanks, Doomfist. Rocket Punch. The Empowered Punch is no longer consumed when the windup is cancelled by Seismic Slam or Power Block. So basically if someone's like going for the punch and then they decide to cancel it with their E or for a block, you still keep it. Don't know why that wasn't already like that, but hey, that's good. Junker Queen. Oh my goodness. Impact damage increased from 90 to 105 on Carnage. That's pretty big. But if you didn't see it, look at this. Reinhardt Earth Shatter. Knockdown duration increased from 2.75 to 3 seconds. And that's not all. The shockwave range increased from 20 to 25 meters. That's called the three seconds. Well, I mean, there was only they could only go up to three. It was at 2.75. This is old Rhine Shatter. Even if they're on the ground for three seconds, they still will stand up instantly with Suzu. <laughs> Seriously. No, this is actually a really good change, though. There's a reason. The reason why this number means a lot, and they've always been so scared of going back to this number, is. Three seconds is the sweet spot for three swings. So before you would have time for maybe do like two swings and then like a fire strike if you if you hit it while they were standing up. But now you can do swing, swing, swing and be fine. Or you can do swing, swing, fire strike and be fine. And you'll get them like right as they're standing up. So that's a pretty significant shatter buff. Um, that's literally bringing it to old shatter. Will it be enough? I don't know. If it isn't, oh man, we're f Okay. Sigma, experimental barrier. Movement speed increased from 6.5 to 20 meters per second. This change will improve Sigma's ability to protect allies that are farther away from him, so Sigma's shield will travel faster. Um, small, very small buff, so I got, I got nothing for it or against it. All right, oh Jesus. Wrecking Ball. Grappling Claw, the claw. Hold the jump input while the Grappling Claw is attached to terrain to retract it, pulling yourself towards the anchor point. This action can be rebound in the hero setting. So you can be a yo-yo. Yo-yo ball. Uh, now has a one second cooldown if Wrecking Ball never reaches ramming speed before canceling the ability. Interrupting him with hack, hinder, and stuns will s trigger a f the full cooldown. Okay. The maximum duration timer no longer triggers unless he reaches ramming speed. Wait, the maximum duration timer no longer triggers unless he reaches ramming speed. Wait, for on the grappling claw period wait so if you're one of those really shitty ball players like me um 
who like goes to touch like attach it misses so you do it a second time think you missed again but you didn't actually miss you did connect and then you let go trying to do it a third time and went oh shit and then you think it was on cooldown it's only a one second cooldown now instead of the full cooldown but okay i know ball players they are like the doom players where they find shit i'm gonna make an early prediction that they find a way to abuse the f out of this to where they can like literally traverse the entire map extremely quickly. I'm making a bet. They will find a way. Adaptive shield can now be reactivated to redistribute up to 300 overhealth to nearby allies, capping at 75 per person. Enemy and ally detection radius increase from 10 to 13 meters. Minefield health increase from 50 to 60. Developer comments, the general goals here is to add a direct way for Wrecking Ball to support his allies, aside from purely enemy team disruption. Make the hero more approachable while also adding more avenues for skill expression and improve the quality of life around the grapple. Look, first, first off, this looks cool. I think this will be probably be a fun time. Uh, however, though, um, this also has the potential to be one of the most broken things. Like, giving allies extra health is always really spooky in Overwatch. Um, give you examples. Rally for Brig. Junker Queen Shout. We had that Junker Queen meta way back in the betas and no laughter. All I can think of is like, yeah, really juiced up. Was it 250 health tracer? That could be kind of spooky. Uh, and there's another thing I kind of have to at least say here. Uh, I feel like I made a joke a few seasons ago how tank f is, feels like it's turning into support. Um, and I feel like changes like this are just like they're getting a little too real now but i think it'll be fun so i don't know we'll see how it goes <clears throat> uh damage sombra virus total damage over time decreased from 100 to 90 uh you know what i don't know if this is gonna be really like do a whole lot to sombra but ah, sombra. sombra's annoying so tracer recall Ooh. what Tracer recall cooldown increase from 12 to 13 seconds. Pulse bomb also base projectile size decreased from 0.2 to 0.1 meters. The total projectile size is now 0.25 meters. Ah, oh, poor Jay. Uh, this is now more downtime between, sorry, developer comments, there's now more downtime between Tracer can safely re-engage after diving her away, or sorry, driving her away and pulse bomb will now require more precision. Damn, dude, that's up. Oh, that's uh, Tracer has been kind of dominating um, this last season, so I'm actually kind of okay with that. That's pretty good so far. Good, good so far. Um, Venture. Drill Dash. Uh, impact damage decreased from 60 to 40. Damage over time increased from 40 to 60. Same amount of damage, but adds a little bit of counterplay or ability to save. Um seems fine although i don't know we'll see I, it might be it, it might be an unnecessary change clobber impact damage decreased from 30 40 to 30 damage over time increased from 30 to 40. so they did the same thing here um to the, uh the melee tectonic shock vertical knockback decreased by 30 percent uh we are redistributing the damage on some of their abilities so that positioning relative to the enemy and tracking a target are more important for dealing maximum damage. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. I'm not really sure if that was needed, but then again, we only had like a small trial and it was like a quick play trial. So like, this is probably fine. Um, and I will give them credit uh, that typically if patch isn't doing too hot or what they wanted for a new hero or for something like that in the beginning of a season isn't working out they are pretty quick in that first week to make adjustments um so if this is something that maybe over nerfed venture um to the point where it's like yeah maybe you know they're not that good i'm sure they will make some changes so uh, i'm pretty confident this is this is fine support ilari solar rifle uh, primary fire increased from 0.2 to 0.25 seconds. That's not necessary. And secondary fire per heal, uh, heal per second increased from 105 to 115. I think the, the heal was fine. You mostly use it on tanks anyways. 
but I don't really know if Hilari needed a recovery nerf, if I'm honest. I'm not sure about that one, Chief. Um, okay, hold on. Let's let's talk about this one. Lucio, damage pro projectile decreased from 20 to 18. That's a pretty substantial nerf. And sound wave damage increased from 35 to 45. Okay, listen to me. And listen to me well. I like Lucio. I like Lucio a lot. I think the game is best when Lucio is meta. I think that typically it enables less boring, more fun. Things like Zen or Brig are slow and I'm not a huge fan. I like Lucio. But man, he's boop, like giga overtuned at this point. Like, listen, the one season of Super Boop, hey, that's fine. It was it was fun for a bit, but I can't help for can't forget that clip of Emong on King's Row, ulting from one side of the point, trying to go forward and getting booped completely ninety degrees off the map. You know, and it's the lockout that's so infuriating because it's so long to respond. It's okay. Give you an example. If you're on Gibraltar first point on low ground at the end of first and you're standing like where the cart is and you try to fly up to blue box on D.Va and a Lucio boops you down, you cannot make it. Like if you start to fly up and he boops you down, you run out of boosters before you hit the top of blue box. That's a lot. That is a lot. So I don't know why we're nerfing Lucio's damage and then buffing boop damage. Like ah, boop's already really good. You know, I don't, I don't, I think this is a little bit of a heavy handed Lucio nerf, but also they're trying to give like a compensating buff. It's like, stop, stop with the, stop with the bop, the boop. Anyways, let's continue. Oh, Jesus Christ. What is this? Life Weaver rejuvenating dash heal increase from 50 to 60 tree of life pulse healing increase from 75 to 90. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh no oh no isn't this didn't they make it 90 at one point it was really f annoying a couple seasons ago i mean it's literally brig rally but better giga tree oh man not saying Le weaver didn't need anything uh but also he's like a very heal first character with a super heal first character like that when they're trying to have something like the DPS passive where you take away healing, I feel like it kind of, you know, it's like a little tough to deal with. Um, but yeah, Moira, uh, Biotic Grasp, damage per second decrease from 60 to 60, or sorry, 65 to 60. I know Frito's out there jumping up and down. Coalescence, self heal per second increase from 55, 50 to 55. Okay, I guess. Make make her a little bit harder to kill um, during call, but eh, I, I guess it's fine. Wait, that's it? Thoughts on the patch? Um, it's really not much. Uh, you know, I wonder if they're pretty confident that the game feels balanced to them right now. Um, but if I'm quite honest, I'm a little bit disappointed to not see anything about like Arissa. Um, Arissa's kind of dominating again. And I mean, like if you've watched any OWCS in the last week, you just see Arissa everywhere. Uh, and I'm really getting sick of every season being the flavor of the month tank that just giga uh, stand there and don't die, AKA Malga, AKA Arissa, AKA Sigma. And I, I like Sigma, don't get me wrong. I'm just sick of like having only three options this season. Um, and they give some good buffs here to like Queen and Ryan. And we did have the Queen meta. We did have that little Queen meta at the beginning of the season and that little ball meta at the beginning of the season, which was nice. Um, but we're now that everyone's kind of realizing how to play with the new DPS passive and whatnot, it's like kind of gone back to where it was. Uh, but honestly, the tank experience is even worse now than ever. Uh, and you know what? You know it's bad when like I talk to Emong about it, and like he's not even he can't even pretend like he's having a good time to me. <laughs> I'm like, dude, I've never heard you complain about anything in my whole f 
life uh, you know and it's like man dude it hurts it is not fun um and i don't really want to be a 6v6er i really don't i don't want to be that guy uh but like genuinely it's getting terrible it's it's getting to the point where it's like i don't i don't know if i don't know how much longer we can all sit here and go oh shit this is acceptable you know and there's good buffs in here like the carnage buff to make queen a little bit better the earth shatter buff to make ryan a little bit better but the problem is like you probably never even get to shatter <laughs> you're probably, you're probably just dead um so uh it's nice to see new tools but you're literally just not gonna get there you know like it you, you you just won't it's gonna take you a long time to still charge it up and you're gonna split like the mid fight you're gonna suck in the mid fight is what i'm basically trying to tell you i don't hate this patch but i'm a little disappointed and i thought it would be more so anyways though ryan buffs let's hope for the best for next season on that and uh i'll definitely play and give it a shot but yeah we'll see so there is your season 10 overwatch 2 patch notes coming out tomorrow Okay, so Cavalry tweeted this out. Check out all the new skins in Overwatch 2 Season 10. I'm going to mute this just in case there's DMCA music. First one up looks like the Ana skin. I said mute. The Ana skin. Arch Commandant Amari Ana. Fallen Knight Reinhardt. Yo, listen. When I, when I looked at all these... Um, Dude, you guys gave me shit saying like, oh, how, how how do you think the Ryan one's not good? Like, it's one of the best skins. And I'm like, dude, are you guys nuts? Ryan has awesome skins. Like, this one's, it's fine. It's good. But like, this is not S tier, top tier. You guys are crazy if you think this is a top tier. It's good. Like, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta realize, put them in different categories. There's such thing as good and top tier, right? Like, we're talking like a good steak from a nice place versus like Japanese Wagyu, you know? Like, ain't gonna compare, you know? Like, you, you don't have this one too often. It's not it's not like an all the time type of thing, but this one's damn good and you want it. You want it more. You know, like you can have both in a way. You know, it can be good, it's just not top tier. That's, that's fine. Anyways. Talon Tracer. This one's okay. It's not bad, not, it's, it's good. Talon Zarya. Didn't see that one coming. I actually like this one. A little, a little bit basic, but I like it. Hashimoto Hanzo. Hello, okay one. Pretty good. Hashimoto Kiriko. Wow, wait a minute. This one's actually crazy good. I like this one a lot. Her hair, like the hair and makeup style looks good this actually the longer i look at this one the more i like it actually this one hits yeah, they killed it on this one wait is that is she has tattoos okay the tattoo i'm not gonna lie the tattoos are kind of sick switch to 4k what do you mean i have the i have it turned all the way up night ops sojourn overwatch theme music is this okay i don't care i'm not i ain't risking it i got dmca watching owcs yesterday ain't happening Retro Future Echo. Uh, not a big fan of this one. It's okay, though. Oh, I didn't even notice the ears. Hang on. The ears are cool. Okay, I got a few extra points for the ears. <clears throat> Probably the best Arista skin yet. This is awesome. This is cool. <laughs> Hello, Ruben. That's a good one. Zen... Zen Destroyer Zenyatta. Wow, you're really just leaning into the whole Zen destroying people, huh? Strike Commander Doomfist. Okay, not gonna lie, they kind of cooked on this one. They kind of cooked. This is a... That is a great Doomfist skin. That is actually such a good Doomfist skin. I don't know what it is about this one, but it makes me feel nostalgic. Does it make you feel nostalgic? Because, like... You know, looking at like original Overwatch Heroes 2016 vibes, it makes me feel very nostalgic. I don't know why. Junker Symmetra. Okay, they kind of killed it on this one. They kind of killed it. Longhorn Cassidy. 
What in the fuck? <laughs> oh my god! Dang, oh, I didn't, I didn't get to really see the front that well. This is like... This is like farmhand ca Cassidy. <laughs> Ironically, it's actually pretty good. It's actually pretty good. I'm just laughing because it's funny. And also, God damn, where did he get these? My guy been hitting the gym. Good Lord. That guy could crush a couple watermelons in there. Junker Genji. I'm normally not a big fan of the whole Junker idea. Uh, not my favorite thing. This one's okay, though. Not my favorite, but it's okay. Oh, this is so good. This is actually so good. They actually f cooked on some of these. It just makes you feel so nostalgic, you know? They, they just feel so nostalgic, you know what I mean? Like, it just, it, it feels like we're looking at Overwatch back in the day. Scorpion Baptiste. Wait. Wait, is this a Battle Pass skin? Oh, finally, Baptiste got a Battle Pass skin. Because so people, you know, stop talking about Bap not getting Battle Pass skins, and it's low-key... Okay, it's all right. It's all right. It's pretty good. And actually, I like the gun. The gun looks really cool. Uh, the color scheme's kind of boring, but the head the headpiece area kind of looks cool. Uh, and the gun looks sick, so I'd say it's pretty good. I mean, honestly, the, the gun is what matters the most. It's what you see anyways. Oh, he's got a little tail. Never mind. I have a few extra points. What did you do to my girl? What have you done? What did you do? What did you do? No, I'm not. I, I, I'm not. I'm not feeling this one too much. I'm not feeling this one too much. I'm not a huge fan. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. My goodness, they cooked. Captain Lacrox. Oh, this is probably the best Widow skin. This is probably my new favorite. And then Vengeance, Vengeance Mercy, the new mythic. Damn, dude. These ones are shop skins. Uh, is there anything we didn't see? Oh, we didn't see this Torb one. Oh, and this Venture one as well. I wonder if there's more in, in the other tweets. Hang on, let me keep looking. Another one of Mercy. And I love how all the replies are just mother, mother be mothering. Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, let's see, another one. She has a DBZ scouter. Wait, you're right, she does. <laughs> What the hell? Oh, this is like a four minute long one. Hang on. All right. This is all the combinations. Hairstyle red. Or oh, sorry, hairstyle one, hairstyle two. Mask one blue. I'm not gonna lie, I like that one a little bit. Mask one purple. Mask one red. Wait, hang on, wait a minute. So wait a minute, hang on. Hair is one customization, mask is another one. Okay, so two customizations so far. Not counting like variations within that one. Because of the colors. Okay, we'll, we'll count the colors. So three for colors. Mask two, red. Mask three. Wait, so two hair, three masks. How many colors? Three colors? Three colors. Wait, it's three hair? 
Three hair, three colors, three masks. Oh, staffs, one staff. What? And blaster, so 12. 13 for another staff. 14 for another pistol. Fifteen? I should know that's another that's a color. That's a color scheme. Sorry. So fourteen combinations so far? It's only two hairstyles? Oh, okay, so then it's thirteen. I I read chat and I believed it. Two hairstyles, three weapon, three mask, three colors. Damn, dude. Dude, they ate good. Eleven potential combinations. Sorry, eleven potential options. So how many combinations would that be? I mean, we're, we're watching all of them right now, but I haven't been counting. Oh, that one's cool. I like the I like the color scheme on the blaster on that one. Coping over cosmetics. How are we coping? As, how is cope? We're literally looking at the combinations. It's not coping. What? I feel like sometimes you just want to say something just to say something. You know? I don't even think, do you even know what the word coping means? Never mind. Not worth my time. I don't like that one. That one is kind of ugly. <laughs> Sorry. I, I hate to say it. I like that one. I like the red one too. That one's pretty good. I don't know why, but that one feels like it's going to ask for the manager to me. Oh, I like that one. That one's really good. That one's alright. That one's pretty... Okay. I don't like it as much as the other one. That one's okay. Skull Mask does go hard, though. I like that one. That one looks good. I'm a big fan of the purple. Purple makes me feel like Moira to me. I like that one. That one's really good. That one's also really good. Isn't it kind of underwhelming for a mythic skin? 11 combinate or 11 potential options? No, that's probably the, that that other than Sigma might be the most. That's definitely not. Eleven different options is probably it, it's either that, the most or the second most. The only other one that I think has more is Sigma, and I don't even know if Sigma does have more. I like that one. That one looks good. The purple has too much brown. That might be it. That might be it. Wow, that was a lot of combinations, though. Holy f***. Chat, any mathematicians in chat that can say how many combinations that was? Oh, from Hoshi? Hmm. Shut the f*** up. Shut the f*** up. There's no way. <laughs> That's awesome. That's so good. Okay. I'm not going to lie. Pretty good. They, they, they did pretty good this season with uh, the cosmetics and skins and stuff like that. Another, Honestly, another pretty good season. They kind of knocked it out of the park again. So...